I'm Dave Vellante, Wikibon.org, and we're here with Andre Kemp, who's to my left. Andre's with VMware. Andre, good to see you again. Yeah, it's great to be here, it's fantastic. And Richard Probst, who's a VP at SAP. Richard, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Dave, good to good see, to see you. you. And Bernard Schilsky from EMC, good to see you again. Now, Andre and Bernard, we were on, uh, on theCUBE last week yep. at SAP Sapphire, which was a great event. Uh, Richard, I presume you were there. Yeah, since, great show. Uh, in force. So why don't we break that down? I mean, Richard, what, what were you guys trying to accomplish at Sapphire, and do you think you succeeded at that? Well, there were you know, several big messages, but the number one message out of Sapphire was run like never before. So it's really time to put your foot on the gas and really go, and that SAP is there to help our customers do that with our partners. And then behind that message, there's certainly stuff we wanted to talk to people about, HANA, the in-memory database, our cloud strategy, and really all the product that we're delivering right now. You know, I thought, Andre, it was an interesting juxtaposition you had you know, the, the compare, for instance, EMC World with, with Sapphire. I mean, this is a, a technology show. Right. Sapphire's a business show. Right. Yeah, but there was a lot of technology at, at Sapphire. I mean, we heard a lot about HANA, right? Uh, we heard a lot about mobile, which is, you know, it's, it's technology, it's cool technology, <laughs> but, you know, it's consumer. We heard a lot about personalization, but, so, what, what, what's, your, what's your takeaway from, from Sapphire? Well, I think the takeaway is that, uh, as Richard was saying, uh, run anywhere, run anything, and specifically from a virtualization standpoint. I think one of the key things that was coming out of there was that you can actually take uh, your largest SAP system, use technology from EMC such as vBlock, HANA also from EMC as well, virtualize that on the, on the VMware platform quite successfully. It doesn't matter if you're running Oracle, SQL, whatever database as well, completely 100% virtualized. Yeah, we're going to talk about that, and Bernard, now we're here at, at you know in your backyard here, EMC World, you guys started all with cloud meets big data, you know, about a you know, year and a half ago or so. Um, and you heard a little bit uh, from, from SAP about big data, you know, big data, we call it big fast data. But you guys, that's really major themes, transformation. You know, what's the vibe at EMC World for you and uh, you know, what's your angle on all this? Yeah, it's been it's been amazing. I mean, coming here from, from Sapphire to EMC World, it really where SAP meets the infrastructure. So uh, going back to Maybe putting that on your mind, my takeaway from Sapphire was the key one is, oh, SAP is going to be a database vendor. And naturally, as a database vendor, they're so much closer to the infrastructure, which is where we are. So I think the vibe here also is we are going in line. If you, if you look at the way we name things, I mean, SAP calls it big data. We've been calling it big data. It's, it's really going across one line. The way we market it, the way that we uh, put the value proposition out, and it's it's really and going back to the to the MOU and the uh, joint joint cooperation that we're doing. It is really that SAP has embraced the role, like uh, embracing cloud, putting the applications on there, uh, making making mobility real, on putting data on accessible anywhere and so forth. This is where we as VMware, EMC, and SAP are teaming up. Uh, it, it's about time, it's the right time, it's a lot of fun, I have to assure you, and it's all for the good of the customer. So that really makes me feel good, and actually, yes, it's very technical. It's two great shows all around customers, which is the main thing, so I feel very okay with Sapphire. I Absolutely. feel the same great way here in EMC World. Yeah, oh. it's, it's an interesting dynamic going on, and so we, you know, at the theCUBE, we love to, to handicap the horses on the racetrack, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> The, you know, Joe Tucci was talking this morning about the waves of IT. You know, he's always talked about the waves of IT in the context of when new waves come along, you get new winners and new losers. And that's always happened in this business. And I think it's going to happen again this time, but there's something different, and that's the, the following. The IT business, the enterprise business, is largely an oligopoly now. You've got a, a few large whales, maybe four, five, six, that really control the chessboard. Mm, that's um, true. And now you've got two companies, EMC and SAP, that are the small of the big. Um, now, you're, I've made a prediction that EMC and VMware will be the next $100 billion market cap company, but then there's this little company that's going to mess up my prediction, which is SAP. You know, you're right there, you're a little, little bit ahead of those guys now. So it's a really interesting dynamic where, you know, these companies, these large companies, they have a lot of cash, they got a huge customer base, they're not going anywhere, you know, overnight. I mean, they're very strong, they're close to their customers. So now you see a really interesting dynamic with, with EMC and of course VMware aligning with SAP to solve some of these customer problems around cloud, around data, data in memory, or in your guys' case, big data, certainly EMC and VMware starting to make big data plays. So my, my question to you, Richard, is what's, 
What's your take on the partnership between SAP and EMC and VMware? Is it, you know, a lot of people think it's the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but it feels like it's a little bit more than that. Maybe give us some color on that. Well, I think it's a lot more than that, David. And you know, uh, I think that, it, that, that Tucci was absolutely right. There are waves. But if you go down to the beach and you watch the waves come in, there's a gap between waves. You know, it's not waves all the time. There's a wave and a gap and a wave and a gap. And we're going through a time of change right now. So for a long time, customers have been kind of consolidating, figuring out what they've got, getting their costs under control, getting their operation under control. But now the customers are ready to really burst out and grow again. And it's time to solve problems that they couldn't solve before. Problems that you have to solve with big data, with cloud, with mobile. They're trying to figure out how do I get ahead, how do I get the competitive advantage and solve these new problems and get on, get on the front of this wave, right? get on the crest of this wave and really ride it. Now you're right that SAP is not as big as some of the other uh, uh, you know, massive players in this, in this industry. We hope that we're uh, big enough to have change the world and small enough to move quickly. And if you get that balance just right, you can really make a lot of stuff happen. But yeah, we for yeah, sure can't yeah. do it by ourselves. Yeah. So we have to work with great companies like VMware and EMC to really deliver on what the customers are asking for. This partnership is a very strong partnership and we're really happy to be working together. And, and the bill, bill on just what he just said, the key word's relevance. I mean, it's the being relevant to the, the business at hand. And that's, I think, when all three companies, SAP, VMware, and EMC, are actually bringing up to the business and saying, you're now going to transform the way I'm going to go to market and do business and actually impact the bottom line. Seriously impact the bottom line. Well, it's, and it's interesting too, it's, and it starts at the top with, with Tucci, with McDermott, with Schnabe. Absolutely. Uh, my my co-host John Furrier did a little social cam with Tucci last night, and Joe is not, you know, Mr. S Mr. Social Media, right? So <laughs> John's got the camera, and when he mentioned McDermott and Joe lit up. Yeah. Oh yeah, we know those guys. Great Schnabe. relationship. We know those guys really well. Going and on for years. Goes down into the field. So again, the dynamic that I see is when you get two large companies with big install bases who know what they're doing, a lot of cash, a lot of good execution ethos, some, some really interesting things can happen. The other thing about Sapphire that I noticed, I mean, you think of SAP, you think of you know, big, a lot of function, obviously, in, their, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the core applications, yeah. but it's big, it's complicated, it's hard to change. What you heard from SAP last week at Sapphire was flexibility, speed, uh, personalization, mobility, all the hot trends, cloud. Absolutely. Um, and, and Lars was sort of the centerpiece with success factors as a big part of the cloud strategy. You know, so you see that coming together, and now Andre, virtualization is the underpinning of sure. that simplification effort. Yep. And you were talking at the top of the show, or at the top of this segment, about how people are virtualizing these mission critical applications, and, and that's becoming real, isn't it? Absolutely, and I think the role of the database it's really going to go the way of the dodo here real quick. When I mean real quick, IT terms, in three to four years, I mean the way that you have these traditional relationship databases to where you have these monolithic type of landscapes. I mean, SAP knows that in order to bring that agility and mobility, it's going to have to have a way to quickly move that data around. And that's where HANA's going to be uh, the game changer. Right, we're already seeing it in the BW side of the house, the business intelligence warehouse side of the house. Wait till they bring that into the OLTP side of the house. Then it's it, game over. Why would you need to actually have a, a, a legacy, and they're actually starting to use that term now, a legacy database architecture. And that kind of mobility is it's just critical. And of course, virtualization will be able to take advantage of that up and down the step. Yeah, obviously, we're seeing more traction with HANA. Yes. You know, it was a pretty new concept. You know, Last year at Sapphire, you had some proof points. Uh, one of the C, I guess the executive chairman of McLaren said, Quote, we are blown away by the capabilities of, of HANA. I thought that was a good, that was a decent testimonial. Well, now, McLaren has always been really smart about collecting data. They collect data you know, from, from every point in the car and every inch of the lap, they're, they're pulling down that data. But the point is, it's not about uh, gathering together petabytes and petabytes in data. It's about figuring out what the real meaning is, about finding the, the needle in the haystack and really digging out where the value is in that data. And to do that, you've got to combine big data with fast data. So you've got to get in memory. You've got to be able to run queries thousands or hundreds of thousands of times faster. McLaren's early at seeing the value of this, and so are some other customers. But the truth is, this thing is taking off like wildfire. It's the fastest product we've ever brought to market. It did 160 million its first year, which was half a year. So Euro. Yes. Right, right, yes. That's, that's Euro. Euros <laughs> in a half a year. 
and just is going on from there. So we're seeing wonderful uptake. The, the early adopter customers are already figuring out how to take value from it, yeah. and everybody else is saying, this is too good to pass up, I got to get on this quickly. Which, they're right, they're absolutely right. Yeah. This is changing the industry. I mean, it is early, but that's a good number, that's sizable, it's meaningful, it's, it's, there's a lot of proof points you can pull from that, and, and SAP's messaging was very strong around, you can see the commitment. Yes. I mean, if you're an SAP customer and you're not thinking about how to you know, enable mobile and HANA, then you're just not paying attention. Well, then we should be, we should be talking. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> right, right. So, fair enough. Now, uh, having said that, um, let's see, I guess it was Snabe who said, imagine a world where every, all, all data is in memory and you don't have to have a traditional disk-based database. So, Bernard, I have to ask you again, you know, you're EMC. You're all about supporting those traditional disk-based <laughs> databases. So, <laughs> what does that mean for you? Uh, so, first of all, I mean, you know that we are in the more in the storage software business, so we're attaching classical disk, we're attaching flash, and, and everything, it's it's about to be able to replicate data. So, it's... Sure, I, you I, sell I, a lot of hardware, come on. It's, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I good mean, margins. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's also a lot of software, you yeah. see? So, um, I think, uh, when was the disk invented? I, I think it was by IBM in 56, okay? And in 56 it was invented because main memory wasn't sufficient, okay? So, yes, a lot of stuff fits in memory, but, I mean, there is an exponential data growth almost uh, 30 or 50 times. And if I ask any of you guys, do you ever believe that all of the data that's being collected will ever reside only in memory? I'd be hard pressed to believe that you say like, yes, sure. For operationalizing the data, putting it in memory, yes, good idea. But there's always more data to be looked at. I mean, look at what large uh, chemical companies are doing with with, with Isilon. They're, they're putting like 10 petabytes and, and more in a single file system that they then mine. I mean, even with compression, you cannot put that in memory. So I think EMC offers a wide choice of solutions in any ranges. So we are supporting the HANA appliance. We're bringing disaster tolerance to HANA and all the good stuff that, that's needed. In a, in a base based on disk, based on flash, or be it if we kind of replicate from flash cards directly or even main memory, so all doable with our technology. So I'm, I'm looking at this very positively. It's like a, a kind of a running gag. Yeah, you can to make fun of EMC as the disk company, but I think uh, those guys who think EMC is just a disk company have, haven't paid attention in the last five to 10 years because we evolved clearly beyond that. I mean, we are a full set infrastructure provider. Look at RSA, look at all the stuff. I mean, we've got the choice for kind of every every problem, so I think it's an easy statement to make and it puts a smile in my face, but it doesn't put any fear in my brain or anything. <laughs> and, and petabytes of RAM are still pretty expensive. Yeah. It is pretty expensive. Let me, let me say this, I mean, we've, we've been talking engineering level like uh, phase change memory, okay? Like five years ago, we said like, oh, it's coming light of this year. Uh, we're talking today and it's again, engineering sample, it's like four years from now and so forth. So we're, we're going to see both, so, and, and we're prepared. Uh, that's, that's a yeah. short story. We had we had Bill McDermott on uh, a couple of cubes back, and uh, John asked him about yeah. You know, anytime he asks McDermott about Oracle, he gets his alpha up. And it's good. <laughs> and uh, but basically he said, look, we're not a hardware company. You know, we're staying, we're sticking to our knitting, and and that's really changed Oracle pretty quite dramatically. Um, you know, Exadata had a lot of initial buzz. David Floyer on Wikibon just wrote a piece, just sort of questioning some of the value propositions of Exadata. I think it's a pretty narrow one. They got a lot of momentum. The billion dollar backlog starting to getting eaten into, and now you're seeing things like HANA, EMC's reasserting itself. Now, it's a game of leapfrog in the technology business, which we love, right? And you yeah, guys but there's a real differentiated strategy here. We've got to right? talk so about that we're, we're not Richard. picking one, frankly, failing hardware company and betting, putting all of our chips on that. And I say that with a little bit of angst, because I used to work for Sun, I worked for Sun for 10 years, very sorry to see where they've gone to. But the fact is, they were starting to, to lose their luster. Spark and, is dead. And Oracle yeah. picked them up. It's Steve Mills, that's a Steve Mills quote, not a Dave Vellante quote, Spark is dead. No way would SAP do this. Instead, what we do is we partner with the best. And there's more than one best, which is the great thing for customers. There's competition. Our partners are out trying to beat each other up, and our customers just win as a result of that. So we love that. We love to work with motivated, brilliant, creative partners, yeah. and yeah, there, there's a competitive market out there, but this is the way the world works best. Yeah. I mean, we so, like to be challenged. I mean, Gelsinger said it that is the, this morning with the LinkedIn example, and yeah, we're sure. I mean, we can do it. We show it every day. Yeah, and I think actually, or, to be quite frank, Oracle is doing a disservice to their customers, quite frankly. I mean, their stance on support, their stance on uh, locking them into a certain uh, stack of technology, that most of that stack is dead, and going into legacy mode and the pricing and the support they're putting for these big dollars for these customers to continually go on and invest in this technology that allows them no flexibility 
I think this is now this is the time, specifically when you're looking at transforming your data center and you're gonna have to change your platform, most likely from big iron Unix space to x86. That is now, now is the time to have the serious discussion of what is my database platform choice? Well, right. so let's talk about that because you, you're talking about virtualizing SAP. A lot of times when you're virtualizing SAP, you're virtualizing you know, Oracle along with it. Yep. And um, there's SAP embracing VMware and virtualization you know, generally. Oracle doesn't embrace anything other than OVM. Customers, many customers don't want OVM. Right. So there's, Oracle has this sort of specter of you know, services threat hanging over them. We've written on Wikibon, look, Sorry. damn the torpedoes. You should go and virtualize Oracle, and we've done a major studies on these, and you know, generally speaking, there's, there's strategies that you can take to minimize your risk, and, and, but I'm wondering what you're seeing in the field with regard to that, that threat of no service, and it does scare away some customers. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, I would say that that's probably the best uh, piece of written propaganda that I've ever seen from an from a ISV company. Ever, I mean, it's written to instill fear, yeah. uncertainty, and doubt. It is the mother of all fun. Isn't it? <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> written to. So whoever wrote it probably got like a bit back. I think Larry check. wrote that. He, he might have wrote it himself <laughs> directly. But the fact of the matter is, that when we talk to customers specifically, we can say without a doubt that there has not been one customer that has had to rebuild a, uh, a, a physical server in order to get uh, troubleshooting, you know, in order to get support. One. We do not uh, support, it doesn't mean certification, and that's the word that Oracle likes to use. Nobody certifies anybody, right? Support is completely different from certification. Oracle runs on operating systems, right? That's what is the support, you know, uh, crux of the matter. We support operating systems, so ergo, you can run your Oracle quite nicely without having to worry about getting support. And you have, you can, easily get support through SAP or we'll call Oracle Direct, but we even took it even further. We said, okay, we're going to put a stake in the sand, we will provide you Oracle support all the way across the application set. We have three Oracle masters on staff, so customers with their existing VMware support contract can call and say, I have an Oracle problem, whatever it may be, EBS or just regular you know, relational database uh, specific, and put in a request and we will give you that support if you're going to get drama from Oracle. So we've actually put our stake in and said, look, we can provide the same or even better support than Oracle can. Yeah, well, it's again, it's an interesting dynamic, and I mean, um, I know, remember the old mainframe days where so IBM had you locked in and somebody put the Amdahl coffee cup on and they'd get a $2 million discount. <laughs> this sort of similar strategy, I know CIOs that have said, hey, I'm doing a DB2 pilot product and it saved me millions. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is, you go to pharma, for example. There's no DB2 in pharma, right? Now you got Hana coming along. It's a it's a new concept. It's an alternative. It's not Hadoop, because right? Hadoop's a whole different animal. Right. We can talk about that a little bit. But so so Richard, that to me is an interesting wedge potentially that's going to help customers a lot because customers are they're stressing out about this. Their biggest Oracle customers' biggest complaint is. I have you know, Oracle negotiations. It's a full-time job. I got to treat it like a project. So, so, can you guys be an alternative, an emerging alternative? Is data that lever that you can use? I mean, Larry has made some pretty incendiary, incendiary statements like, SAP getting the database business is like me playing Kobe one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to that? Yeah, so I mean, Larry loves to be quotable and he does a great job of it. But the truth we is- We love it too, I mean, I have to say. It, 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 it makes good fun, press, right? it's a lot of fun. But Hasso but, asks him not to do it, but- but, uh, but what's the reality here? The reality is the world is changing, the industry is changing, and the reason is because the technology is going crazy. So I'm a technologist, I love watching this stuff happen. Moore's law keeps going, the crank keeps turning, memory keeps coming down, cores keep getting faster, and you can do things now that you couldn't do before. All of the stuff that was built in databases, buffer management, heck, the difference between OLAP and OLTP, all of this was invented in the 80s and 90s as workarounds because the machines weren't fast enough to actually run databases the way they were originally conceived by Absolutely. IBM going back to COD and DATE and the original vision. But the machines just weren't up to that original vision. So you had to do things like copy the data. Oh, and then copy the data again. And then copy the data again and now run some aggregates on it. It's all workarounds and it's all pointless now because now Moore's Law has caught up. You can do this stuff in memory, real time, instant results. We've got queries, we've 
we've seen our customers run queries. They know how long that query runs. They run it every single week. And now on HANA, it runs 100,000 times faster. So industries change when you get something that's 100 times faster, but when you get something that's 100,000 times faster, there's no stopping that. Yeah, In memory I, is the answer. And I think that, um, and Hasso actually, uh, the portions of his talk that I could follow were actually quite <laughs> interesting, where he talked about, look, there's not a lot we can do for OLTP performance. Maybe we can turn some knobs and get that up two or three X, and he talked about aggregates, and he talked about the reasons why. Sure. But to my earlier point, data is the wild card now. Yeah. Yes. And, and the, the, the type of, the, the massive amounts of unstructured data is really that lever that you can use to change the game if it's a, literally 100,000 times faster. If it's 100 times faster, it's going to change things, as you said. Yeah. And that, to me, is what's, what's most interesting here. People talk about the three Vs of big data, the volume, the velocity, and the variety. There's a fourth, which is value. Mm. And that's, to me, what, what HANA brings, yeah. is being yeah. able to unlock that value. This is what Richard was saying, what does it actually mean? Yeah. You need to sift yeah. through that big data right. quickly. And the right. fastest way to do it is to put it in memory. And you can't put it all in memory all at once because very few people can afford petabytes of memory. Right. So you need both. You need the big data and you need the fast in memory access to, to the data that you're working with right now. You need them to work together. And this is why SAP loves to be working with EMC, with VMware, to help our customers get everything that they need, the solution that works as a whole. So what are the specific of the relationship? How does it all work? How do you guys go to market together? Do you actually make sales calls together? Do you, well, I would you say know. that there's really four parts of the relationship, if I may. So there's about first products, and we're working to bring our products together. So from SAP, Landscape Virtualization Manager, working with vSphere, we're already looking at how could we integrate it perhaps with vCloud Director, working with EMC to integrate it directly with the, at the storage level. So getting the products to work together. Mm -hmm. Secondly, support. So none of this finger pointing getting our support folks to be talking to each other and making sure that the customer doesn't have to keep you know, picking up the phone but just gets served right away, which makes me to third, services. We're bringing services together, integrated, coordinated between the three companies to help the customer move forward. And then the fourth thing is, what's the roadmap? They don't want to see a point in time. They want to see that we've got longer term plans, yeah, that we're working together, we've got you know, next generation and next generation and next generation behind that already in development. And so the three companies are working very closely together on kind of a, a new next generation way of managing complex yeah. systems on the cloud. Yeah, and, and you know, we saw the VCE coalition yep. sort of as the as the harbinger to, to relationships like this. You guys must have learned a lot from that, I'm sure. Um, we got we got a break. Uh, this was great. I really appreciate you guys coming on again. And Richard, you you know, it's a great summary. Uh, good luck with the <laughs> partnership. Thank you. And, Thank you. Uh, and the rest of the event here. Uh, this is Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of uh, EMC World. Uh, we'll be right right back to uh, wrap the day and set up uh, the next two days. Keep it right here at siliconangle.tv. Uh, this is Dave Vellante and we'll be right back. <laughs>